Okay, so um, the next two aberrations we're going to talk about are not considered to affect the point spread function. So they're not going to affect um, the image of a, a point, essentially. Um, and remember, everything we image is made up of infinite number of points. So really what we're talking about is how it affects, like how sharp an image is, um, how clear it is. But this is not considered to affect the point spread function, although in a, in a very just, it, it, it will affect the image of a point based on where that point is. So eh, it's a little weird, but um, field curvature, um, an ideal lens system should have field curvature. Um, and the reason for that is, um, and let, let's talk about this real quick. If we draw a lens over here, and we say that that lens has a focal length of F, if we move our point source up, uh, uh, sorry, we change the angle here, um, that distance F is going to actually move off of our image plane and become a uh, curves, it's going to move off of our image plane a certain distance, right? Um, and that, if you if you take the whole set of points that do that, it's going to be uh, a spherical surface. Um, and, and this effect is called a um, field curvature. Now, the, the real problem with this is, is that if our light is focusing at a point here and our, our um, image sensor is flat and over here, then it's going to be this image is going to be out of focus, right? Because our light is going to come off like this. And it's going to form a uh, fuzzy dot here, whereas here it's going to form a nice clear point. Um, another way, it's called a uh, Petzval surface, um, but it does literally form a spherical surface where uh, images of points that are off the optical axis um, are imaged to this spherical surface that is. Um, uh, relative to the uh, lens. So to, to correct this, uh, so the effect of this, like I said, is um, that your image becomes either into or out of focus um, as you move away from the optical center. And you can have field curvature, positive and negative field curvature. You can go in this direction too, if you have some complicated lens systems. Well, obviously a single lens is gonna have positive field curvature in this direction. So um, as you move away, objects become more out of focus. Um, and correcting this is obviously a, a little bit tricky, but it's usually done using a negative uh, meniscus lens um, close, to the, uh, close to the image plane. So you'd put a negative meniscus lens here, and the, the aberration that that produces tends to, the, the higher the angle, tends to push your focal point out, which, which flattens your focal plane. Um, now that that's expensive, right? Um, putting that lens actually means that you have now to correct the spherical aberration that that lens produces and all this other stuff. Um, an example of, of how much more complicated that makes optics are, this is an, an achromat uh, microscope objective. And what that means is that they've corrected for chromatic aberration, which we'll get to in a little bit. But basically it means that most the, all of the colors that you're looking at should behave the same as they go through the lens. Um, a plan achromat objective um, has a flat planar um, focal plane. And so in order to accomplish that, look how many more lenses they have to have. So here they have, uh, uh, let me use red, that'll show up better. You have one lens, two lenses, but they're an achromatic doublet there, another doublet. So a total of five lenses with two doublets. Here they have a doublet, a triplet, what? Um, and then two more doublets, a, a meniscus lens and a hemispherical front lens. So to accomplish this, that takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 11 lenses versus, what do we say here? Five, we have to, we have to double it. We have to use a triplet, which is more expensive to make. And we have to take all these lenses and we have to place them correctly. So actually fabricating this is a lot more expensive. Um, so plan achromat uh, objectives are much more expensive than just achromatic objectives. But the downside is with an achromat objective, you're gonna get 
stuff that's in focus in the middle is not going to be in focus on the outside of your, your image. So you're only going to have a usable area that is, is relatively small in the middle. So you have to pay the money to get the, the better uh, images. Now, uh, it, there's been a lot of innovation in this recently. Um, I think it's Nikon. I can't remember who's making these now, but um, be, people have started making curved image sensors for cameras. And what that means is that now you can relax some of this um, lens requirements, make your optics cheaper, or um, in general, better correct for spherical and coma um, aberrations and not have to worry about the field curvature. Um, obviously that makes your image sensor more expensive, but if it helps get a clear image without having to have quite so many um, the lens elements, that's, that's better. Uh, and we'll talk about this later in the semester, but each lens element here, it results in a loss of light. You get a little bit of reflection off of each surface. So if you have 11 lens elements, that means you have uh, 22 interfaces, right? At least 22. And with 22 interfaces, you're going to get uh, twice as much light loss due to reflection off those interfaces as you will here. So lots of benefits towards having a field um, image, sen curved image sensor, which um, allows you to not have to correct for field curvature, or at least not have to correct it as much. Um, this, uh, I'm sorry, this is Sony. Sony is making this. Um, and, and, the, and the way they're doing it, by the way, is they're just taking a, a, a thin image sensor and they're literally gluing it to a surface and curving it, which is really interesting. Um, and since it's made out of silicon, it's not, it doesn't, they curve it enough that it doesn't break. And I guess that's, that's good. Um, the Kepler telescope um, has a curved image sensor. And what they've done is they've actually taken multiple image sensors and they've just put them onto a curved surface. So here you can actually see we have a, a positive curvature, field curvature. Here we have a negative field curvature because um, the rest of the telescope is coming off in this direction, if you will. Um, and what that allows them to do is allows them, like I said, to, to not have to correct for that field curvature um, in the optics, which makes the optics much more simple. Um, in telescopes, especially the Kepler telescope, that that usually means you just have a cheaper telescope and a less expensive telescope. And simpler, right? Less, less alignment issues. Um, and you're not losing light again whenever they hit an interface. So um, we can see field curvature, although field curvature is, uh, <laughs> field curvature is hard to see. Field curvature. Um, Yeah, field curvature is hard to see. So let's go back to our, let's share our, um, what's it called? Our notebook again. Great, so we're sharing our notebook. And uh, if we look at our notebook now, I've, I've set up, um, this time I've set up a, an achromatic doublet, so it's a, 100 millimeter achromatic doublet. So it still has the same focal length as our um, plano convex lens, but this will be much more corrected for spherical and um, spherical aberration, coma, and astigmatism. So all those will be much better corrected. And you can actually see it over here on the right hand side. Uh, the focal points are much cleaner. Um, when I made this, I was again kind of, kind of hesitant to do a big angle, but we're going to do a big angle here. So let's do twice that. So one, two, there we go, much higher angle. And that shows up then between 10 and 15. So um, if we focus in on, we can see that the, the focal point for our bottom rays, which are near the optical axis, is right around 113.5, 113.5. Um, let's change this angle to 12 or 1.12, um, and we're going to have to move our window up to go between uh, 10 and 15 should be fine. So let's go top is 10, uh, 15 and the bottom is 10. Oh, not quite fine. All right, we have to move left. 
let's make this one oh nine. There we go. So now we can see it. And our focal point has moved to 111 millimeters. So uh, we have a single lens, right? And that single lens is doing exactly what we expected it to do, which is to produce a curved image uh, plane. Um, at the optical axis, our focal point occurred at 113.5 millimeters and what, approximately 12 millimeters off the optical axis, our uh, image plane is at 111 millimeters, which means if you look up here at the top, if you look at the, uh, the plane of 113 millimeters, uh, our image is going to be com comparatively out of focus, right, um, as it is at 111 millimeters. And that's bad. So you have to, like I said, you have to correct for that by adding optical elements and optical elements add other kinds of aberrations you have to correct for and greatly increase the complexity of your design. Um, I'll have to fix this note here at the bottom. It's actually the top focus is at 111. Let me the bottom there. Cool. So um, yeah, that is a big difference when you've paid uh, $300 for a lens, right? You're gonna have to pay more to get more lenses in there. Cool. All right, so the next video is going to be about distortion.